So our case of a volcanic eruption is uh, the Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991. Uh, Mount Pinatubo is located on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. Uh, with all of our rest of surf case studies, uh, particularly on natural hazards, we really want to think about the effects and the responses and how we can categorise those. So if we split our drawing of a volcano, basically four ways. And what we've got on this side is we've got our effects. And here, we've got our responses. And then what we can do, we can categorise our effects and our responses into short term and into long term. So, starting off with the short term effects. Obviously the, the most obvious one of any natural disaster is to think about the number of deaths. So we represent that as a kind of a greystone. And uh, it actually resulted in 367 deaths, mainly from uh, pyroclastic flows and lahars. Now, the volcanic eruption resulted in an ash cloud that was 22 miles high. That ash settled on buildings, causing them to collapse inwards. Okay, so roofs collapsed under the weight of the ash, and the total number of that we're looking at around 200,000 properties destroyed. Other big issues in terms of uh, short-term problems were uh, the destruction of roads and bridges that also uh, collapsed under the weight of the ash or were destroyed by mud flows. Now, moving on to the long-term effects. Uh, it's quite a few long-term effects that we can think of here. Firstly, the ash settled on the crops, okay, and that resulted in them being buried in ash, and the 91 and the 92 harvests failed. You know, that resulted in huge economic impacts, obviously, for um, farmers in, in the Philippines who relied on their, uh, their crops for their source of income. Uh, not only did farmers who grew crops suffer, but we also saw uh, sort of farmers who reared livestock. Okay, uh, polluted water from uh, the mud flows and the ash resulted in the deaths. I said, so can never draw cows. Of around one million livestock. Okay, these are all local secondary effects. One of the uh, uh, sort of more global scale effects was a 0.5 degree cooling in global temperatures. So this is actually on a global scale. And that was a result of the ash uh, in the atmosphere blocking out the sun. And actually resulted in worldwide temperatures dropping for that year. So, we've got some really nice examples of short and long term effects. We now want to think about the responses. So what was done in the short term? Now, a nice kind of common short-term effect, one to always consider talking about, okay, is the arrival of international aid. And they would have brought with them, you know, emergency accommodation, you know, tents. They would have brought with them uh, first aid. And on top of that, they would have brought things such as uh, water supplies and emergency food. Uh, on top of that, we also uh, saw planes being diverted to avoid the ash cloud that could actually technically count as a short-term uh, effect as well and that we saw a sort of a disturbance in uh, international flights uh, the army as well evacuated people living on the island and we saw somewhere in the region of 60,000 people evacuated by the army to areas of safety so these were all short-term responses. One other thing that they did in the short term was that the island of Luzon was kitted out with sirens. These sirens let off a warning to warn people that the eruption was imminent. Now in the long term, we've seen the reconstruction of houses and villages and the rebuilding of roads and bridges. It links into our short-term effect up here. We've also seen okay, uh, 
the creation of a wrist map. What that does is it uh, identifies areas around the volcano that are particularly uh, vulnerable if another eruption was to occur and therefore people don't uh, build in it anymore so there's no chance of uh, anything being destroyed in them. And we also saw an increase in monitoring. Mount Pinatubo had been dormant and people had become maybe complacent and hadn't been monitoring the volcano as well. So we now have cameras set up around the rim of the volcano to monitor if another potential eruption is about to occur. I just want to quickly go back to the uh, long-term effects. You know, they're obviously quite negative here and we talked about the 91-92 harvest failure. But we also need to remember that ash is a natural fertiliser. And that resulted in really good crops in the years after the eruption, sort of 93 onwards. So you know, that is isn't actually a positive uh, effect of the volcanic eruption.